Well, it is good to be a man. It's good to be a man. Chapter 13. And it's good to be a man. Chapter 13 is all about fraternity, the necessity of fraternity. And even Andrew Tate, Cobra Tate, says, Because you should go to your boys, your team. Now, Pastor Michael Foster says it's not enough just to be a man on mission. Think of your mission as a train. It requires rails to run on. And the first of these rails is brotherhood. Without brothers, your mission will veer off course. Pursue deep friendships with other guys. This kind of non-erotic intimacy between men cannot and will not exist among opposite sex friendships. It's also the kind of friendship that has been destroyed in our culture. But be careful, the only thing that kills mission as fast as isolation is crooked brotherhood. Avoid the crab mentality, the envious companionship that prevents actual maturity and growth. So pick your friends wisely. They say you're the sum of your five closest friends. That's a pretty good saying, I think. You are the sum of your five closest friends. So pick them wisely. And he says that in the chapter, chapter 13, that correctability is one of the single best weapons a man can wield in his battle against effeminacy and his battle to be manly. He says correctability primarily happens in the bonds of brotherhood. You need to be a correctable person that can take advice from manly men, not, not dummies, not brokies, but manly good men who know what they're talking about you you need to be able to take correction from them he says good male friends will support you compliment you shield you raise you up push you forward pull you back when necessary hone you critique you and ultimately they will sanctify you in christian brotherhood men need men find each other take risks and it's worth the reward now, he even brings up in the Bible, David, who was a manly man. King David slayed the giant Goliath. You remember the story? He even walks back into King Saul's chamber, his palace, whatever. After he slays the giant, cuts off his head. He, he struts back in there holding the giant's head in his hand. And King Saul says, whose son is this guy? I mean, he was... He was rocking and rolling. You know, this is David, a real man. He says about him in 2 Samuel 1 26, David says, your love to me was more wonderful than the love of a woman. He's talking about Jonathan, his friend, that they had this close bond, closer than a brother bond, David and Jonathan. And so in the book, in this chapter 13, he points to that fraternity there that they had, that close friendship that helped David, that drove him in the future. Jonathan helped protect David in a way that only a close warrior friend can do. He says in the book about this sharpening, as iron sharpens iron is what scripture says. So men sharpen one another. It says this sharpening is a natural part of masculinity. It is built into us in a unique way. You, you may have noticed that men insult each other and they don't mean it. In fact, insults are a natural way that men bond and show affection. Women are different. They compliment each other and don't mean it. <laughs> well, I like that. <laughs> we know that. Well, if you got sisters, we know that. We know that. When they insult each other, it's serious. This is talking about women. Men can fight and be friends afterwards. Women become bitter enemies. And, oh, <laughs> don't you know that, boy? If a woman doesn't like another woman, she will hate her till the very end. And uh, I mean, man, you could, you could go 10 years down the road and she will still hate her just as much or more as the day when whatever it was happened. You know, she looked at me the wrong way. I never have liked her. You know what? That little witch, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I mean, you know how it goes. Anyway, let's get back to men here we're going to talk about. He says, as a general rule, men bond by a process of exclusion, women by a process of inclusion. He says that's to be expected because we are designed for different things. There's a good part of the chapter there. I like how he points out the differences between men and women when it comes to fraternity 
and well, I guess for women, what is it, sorority or whatever you call that? I mean, whatever messed up <clears throat> thing they got. But I don't know if you've ever noticed, but women, they just have a hard time getting along. Boy, they have a hard time getting along. I can't do these simps that time, oh, women, they just know how to do relationships better, blah, blah, blah. It's like, how many women have you been around? Are you crazy? Like, man, women are always fighting with each other. It's, it's ridiculous. And he does talk about Jack Donovan and his book, The Way of Men, in this chapter. And I thought it was a good part. He says, Donovan keenly observes to protect and serve their own interests, the wealthy and privileged have used feminists and pacifists to promote a masculinity that has nothing to do with being good at being a man and everything to do with being what they consider a good man. Their version of a good man is isolated from his peers. He's emotional. He's effectively impotent. He's easy to manage and he's tactically inept. He really can't do much of anything on his own. And that's what society wants. That's what they want. But Pastor Michael Foster is saying that you, you can't be a godly man without being good at being a man, a real man, a true man, not just some tactically inept man. He says you need a gang of men, not a bad gang, but a good gang, a gang of men to run with, fraternity. It's important. Now, even in, like I, I, I alluded to earlier, even Andrew Tate talked about this. He went on this show with this woman. He was talking about fraternity, and it was pretty funny. So I'm going to go to that clip because it's pretty funny. What dude is getting advice from chicks? What dude is getting advice from girls? Any man who sits there and goes, my life ain't going right. Let me text some chick. He's a dumb. He's a dumb. You should, because you should go to your boys, your team. Look, boys do this weird toxic alpha. It ain't toxic alpha. It really isn't, my dear. No, if, if a man has a serious issue in his life, he can't go to a woman. If a man goes to a woman with his issue, it's not a serious issue. I feel sad. My ex left me some dumb. But women can give a They're trying to kill me. I need a gun now. You don't text some chick in your phone. You text your boys because only your men who can help you. I'm in Ukraine. The Russians have invaded. I need a way out. Who's got a car? Oh, man, that's good. That's good. Even Tate, Cobra Tate, Top G, he knows you got to have fraternity. If you've got real problems, you got to have your boys. You can't be texting some chick. You got to have your boys. It's what Pastor Michael Foster's talking about because it's good to be a man. And also, it's good to know that Christ is winning. He is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Until next time, this is the Post-Millennial Man.